Hey, my name is Josh Thompson, and you're watching Texas Platinum. What's going on, guys? Texas Platinum is back. It is game week. The day has almost arrived. Uh, happy to be with you all today. We got Matt Myers here. Uh, Matt Madrid, which we forgot to mention in the last video, but he is actually beginning law school. So shout out to him. Um, he'll probably not be joining us for a little while just as he gets, you know, kind of in a routine and figure out what law school is all about. Um, but I sh I'm sure he'll be joining us eventually down the road. So shout out to him for um, making moves and, and starting a new step in the journey per se. Um, before we get started, of course, just want to mention to uh, please subscribe, like, and comment. Um, we hit 1.8K, uh, so our, our little goal has been met, um, but still inching closely to 2K subs um, come next Saturday, hopefully. Um, so please share this video if you enjoy it. Um, share it with a friend, family member, whatever you want. Uh, likes and comments always do us well, too. So let's try to keep this an interactive video. and then. Um, Last announcement that I want to make real quick is just um, shout out to the people in Louisiana um, that have dealt with Hurricane Ida. Um, it's been rough. I have a friend whose parents lost their home um, and a family friend of theirs as well. So um, certainly difficult times. And for those Louisiana fans that may be watching, uh, just know that our thoughts and prayers and um, hospitality hopefully is reaching out to you guys that uh, will be coming out to Austin and for the players as well uh, and just everyone affected. So yeah, uh, with that said, um, we're going to talk a little bit about Sark's press conference from Monday um, and then from their venture into the game preview. Um, so Matt Myers, I'm going to hand it off to you. Uh, kind of go through some of your press conference thoughts. Yeah, the first thing that stood out in the press conference to me, and I'm sure a bunch of other Longhorn fans as well was, Sark doubling down on Casey being the st I mean, Sark doubling down on Hudson Card being the starter, but but saying that Casey will play in this game, which is really shocking because yeah. uh, all offseason Sark's been against the two quarterback system. Historically, he's been against the two quarterback system, and now it seems like he's willing to play Casey in in the season opener along with Hudson Card. Uh, but he didn't. It was really vague. He didn't know how much. Casey's going to play. He says it's kind of going to be a, a gut feel for him. So I would imagine if Hudson Card goes out there and performs just above average, I really don't think there'd be any need to put Casey in the game. And I don't think Sark will want to, but I think what he's really trying to do is just, you know, uh, please Casey as much as he can to keep him on the team for the rest of the season because we're going to need him at some point. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. But I, I'm, I would imagine Hudson Card's still going to take the majority, if not all the snaps, if it's a close game. So, yeah, I thought that was just kind of interesting how Sarka, one quarterback guy, is uh, doubling down on playing two quarterbacks this game. And I hope it doesn't become a trend throughout the season because uh, that's just – that's never good when, you know, when the quarterback's always looking over his shoulder with a short leash with the other one waiting to go in the game. So, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a believer you got to pick a guy and go with it. And I think uh, I think Hudson Card will make the most of his opportunity. And I don't think he'll give up the job. Uh, starting Saturday. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. But uh, another thing that stood out to me on the depth chart was seeing Xavier where they get the start, um, which is kind of cool because, I mean, obviously we're super thin at receiver, but Worthy missed a, like a week of camp due to some like illness he had. And he still held on to a, a starting spot. Kai Money actually kind of buried on the depth chart. What I was, I was surprised to see that. Um, so I don't know, man, these receivers, Sark doesn't seem too concerned about, at least in the press conference, he, he mentioned Marcus Washington as a guy that's explosive. And yeah. <laughs> so that kind of caught my, caught my attention. Uh, but Josh Moore, uh, Jordan Whittington, your usual suspects and starter, uh, no, no this game and, uh, Luke Brockermeyer starting at middle linebacker. So shout out to, to him for being like a walk-on starter, that's a big deal. Uh, what were your thoughts on the uh, – any, any thoughts stand out to you from the press conference, Trevor? Yeah, I, I know that you already mentioned it, but, um, yeah, the quarterback news, uh, I was pretty surprised and almost kind of taken aback by because 
again, you already mentioned it, but I, I want to mention it again, just cause I was, you know, it's that big. Um, yeah. Just taking a little bit back, you know, that he's going to give Casey a little bit of playing time. I really think that um, it's an efforts to keep him around, which at the same time, I just find kind of weird because he's said all summer, basically, like, if we lose a quarterback to transfer, that's that's what it is. Like he he, he like people have asked him, like, are you going to try to keep them both for, both around, or what are you going to do if one leaves? And so it's like, yeah, whatever, yeah, you know, playing the best player, blah 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 blah. And then when it finally comes to it, <laughs> that's what it looks like. At least to me, I, I could be wrong. I don't know, you know, what's going through Sark's head or or what the program um, has planned for this and how they're going to go about actually handling it throughout the season, but. Yeah, typically two quarterback systems uh, are not good, um, and they typically only exist whenever you don't have a good quarterback, per se. You might have two, like, okay ones that you can't decide between. Um, But I do know that Hudson's really good, and Casey's really good. Um, And I think if you ride with one, you're going to be okay. Um, So I, yeah, I hope that this doesn't linger around and turn into another, like, you know, Sims, Apple White, or Bouchelle swoops, or, you know, any of that swoops herd type thing. Uh, none of those, I mean, I guess Apple White Sims wasn't horrible because the team was really good. But when you look at our last, you know, quarterback battles where we've had uncertainty at the position, the season typically is uh, pretty bad as a result. Um, so definitely not a fan of that, but we'll have to see. I'm, I'm curious how many snaps, how that's going to work. Um, yeah, I hope that's not a long-term thing. Uh, and then other things that we have not touched on that I wanted to talk about was just, um, Dicker being our punter. Uh, I know that's something that you hinted at Myers that I thought it was going to be Isaac Pearson, just what I was reading, but, um, yeah, Dicker's that guy and, uh, should be interesting to see him, you know, take up both of those duties. Um, he did it pretty well last season, so I expect him to continue and do really well with that as well. Um, and then, um, I guess final thoughts, uh, Hudson as a holder, a little funny. Um, I don't love that either, especially if he's going to be our starting quarterback. Um, typically you have, you know, your kicker or your punter be your holder. Um, so in this case, it would have been Buchevsky, which he's done it before for years. So why, why is he not at least being a holder is very strange to me. Um, I mean, maybe even Isaac Pearson, but the fact that you're a starting quarterback is going to do it, I, I don't love, but, you know, Jordan Shipley, I guess, did it a long time ago. So, you know, if you got a good holder, you got a good holder and maybe carts that guy. And then last thing that I know that we wanted to touch on, just a shout out, um, uh, Texas had a game walkthrough last weekend, uh, which sounded to have been pretty well. I think that's a very smart idea, especially with the new coaching regime and uh we got a little look myers you'll have to tell me where you found this because i I didn't find it anywhere but it looks like the new helmet decals are coming back the the darker longhorn uh logo on the helmet uh reappeared on this picture that myers found um myers where 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 did you see this and and it led to a cdc tweet where he mentioned us so that was that was pretty neat it was on the Texas wide receivers Instagram. They always – that's a good follow, by the way. They always post clips of practice and, and in this case, the scrimmage. And, yeah, I mean, they were showing some routes. Then I was looking and I was like, oh, man, they were in the, the, the classic vintage Longhorn helmet. So I was super happy to see that, and I can't wait to see it in person on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on Schooler, it definitely looked dark. Some of the ones in the background, I was like – is that the vintage one or not? But the fact that CDC like retweeted with the winky face, like shows me that, yeah, they're, they're rolling with that. Um, I, I feel like he wouldn't do that if, <laughs> if that wasn't the case. Um, so pretty pumped about that. Cause we've, we've called for those helmets amongst other uniform changes for a while. So it's nice to see one ball, you know, going in the right direction uh, immediately. Um, other uniform changes likely happening down the road. Um, any other final thoughts, Myers, before we actually go into the game? No, not really. I'm just anxious to talk about the game because we have a – it's game week finally, so I'm just super excited to start talking 
about like the actual the game and the, the strategy behind it. Well, let's do that then. Um, I'll hand it back to you. Uh, tell me a little bit about who, what do we want to start with, Texas's side or or our opponent in Louisiana? Let me introduce y'all to Louisiana. I'm sure y'all y'all already know about the hype they have. They're kind of the darlings of the of the Sun Belt, the darlings of the G5. They went ten and one last year with Billy Napier, who's one of the best coaches in America right now. And they return pretty much everybody. They're the most, literally the most experienced team in the country, uh, which could be problematic. Uh, they return their quarterback, Levi Lewis, who started like 25 games for them. And I mean, he's not like a world beater at quarterback, but he's definitely good enough to win, to win with. And definitely if we make mistakes, he can make us, he can make us pay. I mean, he's, he's not like an NFL arm or anything. He won't throw bombs downfield or really, you know, prolific deep outs, anything like that. But, He's good in the intermediate pass game, and um, he's got good timing, and he can definitely run. So when plays break down, that's kind of when he's uh, pretty good or at his best maybe. So, um, But they do lose their running backs from last year, uh, which were uh, – but they had two really good running backs last year. But now they're going to try out Chris Smith, I believe is his name, and he returned kicks for them last year. He actually returned one against Iowa State for a touchdown, very prolific returner, and uh, he's really fast. So, I mean – he doesn't have as much experience at running back, but uh, he looks like a good player. Um, offensive line is probably the strength of their team. Uh, they return everybody, uh, and Max Mitchell's probably the best player on that O line. He's their their big tackle. I think he's got maybe NFL potential. Um, so, I think they gave up the least sacks in FBS last year, which is really impressive. That kind of caught my eye. I was like, oh my gosh, that's that's really good. They have a great O line, and they also gave up the fifth least tackles for loss in the run game last year as well um, but they do have one weak link i think on the o-line it's that and that's their center who is only 267 pounds six foot uh just to compare that to keandre coburn who's over 340 <laughs> and tavandre sweat who's also pushing 340 uh you would think that we would be able to definitely wreak some havoc on the interior of the line uh but you know louisiana's well coached you know they've probably seen that game plan before uh, so I'm sure they'll have some help for him with him, help for him on the inside, which in turn could open up, you know, the outside rush from maybe an Ovia Gofu, Alfred Collins, Jacoby Jones, guys like that may have a uh, really good, really good game on Saturday. So, yeah, and the linebackers are solid, they're experienced, but their secondary is uh, really the, you know, the, the best part of their defense. I mean, I think they had 16 interceptions last year, which is incredible. That's a lot. Uh, they have physical DBs that'll jam on the on the line of scrimmage which is really concerning for us with Xavier Worthy and Josh Moore these are not big receivers uh by any stretch of the imagination and um so I, I would imagine we're going to see Sark doing a lot of emotions getting his receivers uh moving before the plays like he did at Bama so they can kind of cleanly go into routes and not have to fight off uh, a bunch of jams uh, but I think it's going to be a great game uh strategically these are two uh well-coached teams and I, I just can't wait to see a how Sark and PK handled, you know, the most experienced team in the country, a top 25 team. Uh, what, do you have any more thoughts on Louisiana, Trevor? Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, I, I, d I definitely agree with the points. Uh, Levi Lewis being a fifth year quarterback. Um, I think it's incredibly important that we get pressure on him and try not to let him sit in the pocket because he'll either, you know, throw passes and, you know, make those completions or with his mobility, be able to escape. So it's important that we keep him um, uncomfortable and not too comfortable uh, as such an experienced guy. Um, and he also is generally pretty good at limiting turnovers, uh, which is not good for us because we're going to have to force, <laughs> you know, force some turnovers, hopefully, um, and uh, not give him too many opportunities to, uh, to have to, you know, be able to make plays and such. Um, O-line, definitely a strength um, that has me very, probably what I'm looking forward to the most nervously and excitedly uh, for this game is to see what our pass rush looks like. Cause that's been such a struggle over the past few seasons um, under Todd Orlando and, and company. Um, so with coach Kukowski and, and, and how we have, um, our defense structured, we should be getting a lot more pressure off the edge um, and up the middle. Uh, our D-line is as good as it's ever been, um, and our edge rushers have been making a lot of plays during camp. So 
I, I expect them to be able to, you know, get pressure, but I have to, I have to see it to believe it because it's been so long since we've had a consistent rush outside of like Joseph Osai, you know, uh, here and there. Um, even he wasn't like incredibly consistent. He, he had some really good games, but then you do have some games where um, he wasn't as present uh, as other games. So to see a consistent pass rush, I think would be um, something that I'd be really excited about and I'm looking for. Um, yeah. I mean, strength, definitely their offense, their defensive secondary is really good. So I'm, I'm a little nervous about Hudson card, but I think he'll do a good job, uh, picking apart. Um, he's limited to turnover Zala camp. So that's really key for me. Um, I think that's really the main reason that he is the starter over Casey is that seemed to be a big thing. And, um, Sark talked about that in his press conference, that that's something that he takes, um, into great consideration when rolling with the quarterback is how well do you protect the football? Um, so hoping that, you know, card continues that and, and the uh, stresses of, you know, real life game day against a different opponent, other than, you know, your own players um, in front of a big crowd and uh, against a really good team. Um, definitely curious to see how he holds up. And then last point that I wanted to make is special teams, Louisiana. That's pretty much how they beat Iowa State last year is off of uh, special teams and turnovers and such, um, which is good for us because our special teams unit seems to be pretty solid this year. Um, I just, yeah, they're experienced teams, so they're going to take advantage of opportunities if we give them to them. Um, but that's, you know, we'll see how well, you know, our coaching staff translates whenever it comes to things like special teams and uh, avoiding penalties and such. Um, very curious to see how fundamentally sound we actually are and um, being able to defend that aspect of their game as well, because, you know, they're going to be looking for an edge, uh, especially being on the road and uh, really wanting to win this game. Um, yeah, de definitely something to watch. All right. I think, I forgot a couple things on Louisiana, and those are good points, Trevor. But I don't know if if, you, if I covered this, but their receiver room is pretty talented. Oh, yeah. But what sets them apart is their height. They're really big. They're big receivers, and that's kind of a challenge for us because last year we had trouble defending those deep jump balls, and it seems like we've always had trouble defending those really since Dwayne Aquina. So I think PK and company to be ready for that. I think they will try to test us downfield. Um, Josh Thompson and Deshaun Jameson, though, I have a lot of confidence in. So uh, that'd be fun. I, I want to see how that plays out if they try to target our boys downfield. Um, their D-line, I forgot to mention. I mean, their experience, yes, they have, uh, so, uh, they have a huge nose tackle as well. But uh, they weren't great against the run last year. They kind of were a bend but don't break. And uh, they would give up, you know, those five-yard runs pretty consistently. And uh, Bijan can turn those five-yard runs into 50-yard runs uh, pretty routinely because he's, he's just gifted like that. So I think Bijan's definitely going to set the pace. And also, uh, on the, their defensive line wasn't really great at producing a pass rush either. So Hudson should have time to go through his progressions and find the open guy. And, um, I mean, there's no excuse for us not to move the ball on these guys. I know they have a really talented secondary, but I think our offense should stay on schedule. And um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that they will, but – you never know. I mean, like you said, it's a first time starting at quarterback in a in a packed stadium, which was just like so new because you know there were no full stadiums last year. So that yeah. kind of throws a wrench into everything. But uh, schematically, I kind of like where we're at right now, uh, going up against Louisiana. Agreed. Um, how about let's, let's talk a little bit about Texas um, and their side whenever it comes to the actual game ahead. Um, what do you what are your thoughts about Texas and how you think they'll go about attacking Louisiana? Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be a run first type of type of game for Texas. Run first, pass second, because uh, those the strength of their team, like I've been saying, is their secondary, and uh, they're susceptible to, to the run game. So definitely be running Bijan a lot, a lot of Keelan Robinson, Roshan, and then hopefully that'll open up the play action pass. Like Sark loves a play action RPO game. And um, we need to open that up because, you know, they're secondary so aggressive and so physical. So you can't really just let them, 
you know, pin their ears back and, and key in on the pass. Yeah, you have to keep them, uh, you know, on their toes. And I think we'll do that. I think we got a, a mastermind play caller and offensive coordinator calling the shots. What I do want to see, though, is uh, Coach PK calling his defense against uh, this, this uh, pretty seasoned uh, Billy Napier offense. Because I think Billy Napier calls their plays, too. So those are kind of like mm-hmm. two, two great coaches going at it. Um, so I want to see just – how that looks. I want to see Moro Ojimo. Uh, can't, we've heard so many great things about him and our D line too. Ray Thornton, uh, Jacoby Jones, all these guys that have gotten a lot of praise, but I haven't really seen it in the game yet from them. Uh, the potential is there, but I want to see it happen. And then, yeah, DeMarvion Overstone's finally healthy. So was, defensively, I'm more kind of just excited uh, to see what we look like. Offensively, uh, I kind of can, I already kind of know what we're going to do. I think unless Lark just completely yeah. uh, is just doing like 40 chess and I'm completely, <laughs> uh, you know, blown away by his game plan, but I'm kind of curious on the defense. I really don't know what the game plan is. I, I agree completely. Defense definitely has me interested. Um, I mentioned the pass rush earlier. Uh, that's probably number one, but equally, uh, which you haven't mentioned yet, but I'm sure you have on your mind is, is our secondary. Um being as deep as it is and as talented as it is and and how some kind of not unlikely stars, but, you know, kind of behind the scenes players that emerged in camp, um, like a Brennan schooler who changed back to, you know, safety and, and uh, Anthony cook, you know, reemerging again um, after um, a few kind of low, lower years where it wasn't quite as productive. Um, the, the depth chart definitely is interesting. Uh, when you look at the secondary, because there's a lot of very talented players on the bench. I mean, Chris Adamora, um, Jaron Thompson, I mean, a whole bunch of players that are really good. Uh, BJ Foster got the start, so shout out to him. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely something that I'll be looking at. And I'm, I'm, I'm curious how we're going to play secondary wise, because similar to how we didn't have much of a pass rush, you know, under Todd Orlando's regime. Um, I feel like our safeties also struggled as well uh, with coverage. We didn't do a lot of press coverage. It always seemed to be pretty soft, um, which led to, you know, (laughs) quarterbacks having field days against our, you know, against our defense by being able to, you know, complete their passes to receivers and us stopping them once we caught the pass, but not, not breaking up passes so much per se. Um, That's not an overshow. I mean, they, they did it on occasion, but not like consistently. That's what I'm getting at. Um, so that's definitely something to look out for. Linebackers, of course, very excited about with all the buzz um, going on in that position. And then offensively, I think you just about touched on everything. I mean, Hudson Card, um, seeing how he does under pressure and being able to go through his reads. Um, I feel confident that he'll be able to pull that off, but I'm sure he will be pressured. Um Running backs feel very confident in them. Rashawn Johnson is a fantastic uh, RB2, um, good pass blocker too. So he'll be key, I'm sure, and we'll probably get a fair amount of snaps. Uh, Keelan Robinson, very curious to see him play because I really haven't seen him yet at all, but I've heard good things and curious to see how he's utilized. Um, and yeah, uh, tight ends should be a big focus as well. I'm curious to see Wiley and Kate Brewer. Um, very surprised about uh, – um, why am I blanking on his name? <laughs> uh, Jatavian Sanders not cracking the depth chart for for tight ends. That that definitely had me a little surprised, but I guess he's still adjusting to the position and it might take him a little bit of time, but obviously an uber-talented guy. And I think that's it really on Texas's side. I mean – Definitely curious to see how the receivers do um, in terms of uh, we don't really have that physical presence type receiver anymore. I mean, we do with Troy O'Meary, but he'll be out this game. So it'll be a lot of a lot of speed um, and smaller guys versus the traditional big guys that we've had in the past, you know, like a Colin Johnson, little Jordan Humphrey, Brennan Eagles type thing. Um, so that'll be different and we'll take some adjusting, but at the same time, equally excited to see some speed and uh, shiftiness versus big lumbering bodies that don't have a lot of speed. Um, Myers, additional thoughts? 
I'm just super excited to go to the game and take in the atmosphere. It's, it feels like it's been so long since we played, you know, a full game, like a full capacity in DKR. Those games of last season were really weird and not the same. Uh, I drove by the South End Zone today, and it looks it looks amazing. And yeah. uh, the, I don't know how they're going to finish it in time. It looks like there's still a lot of work to do in the kickoffs <laughs> in, in three days now. So they're definitely working overnight right now to get it finished, but I'm sure they'll get it done. But yeah, man, Bevo Boulevard, all, all the fun, the pomp, the band, uh, Clemson, Georgia that night. It's just a, it's going to be a great day. So I'm super excited for it. I just wanted to, it feels like the closer we get, like the slower times goes. So, so we got three more days now. It's going to, it may, t- it may be a long three days, but it's going to be, it's going to be great on Saturday. I like it. Yeah. I will, I will not be at this game. I'll actually be on vacation, but I'll, definitely well hopefully be able to get it in if not i'll be watching after the fact um let's i guess let's transition then uh, unless you have anything else into uh our score predictions for the game what we're thinking you go first trevor oh okay sure so uh as you hopefully you've seen our our season preview if not um be sure to check that out um but if you have spoiler alert both Myers and I um, predict Texas to be able to win this game. Um, I think Myers might be a little bit more confident that we do so than myself. Um, And maybe my score and spread uh, reflect that. So one thing that we didn't mention earlier, spread for this game originally used to be much bigger, um, now down to eight points. Um, I think that's very fair. Um, I, I wasn't a big fan of the bigger spread. I believe it was what? Did it start at 14.5 or 12.5? Yeah, it was it was definitely higher double digits. Um, so uh, currently the score that I have in mind is uh, 34 to 30 Texas. Um, I just, I, I think that both teams are going to put up points on the board, but with the beginning of the season, um, I don't know if our offense is going to be quite the well-oiled machine that um, – it will be come like the end of the season Uh, that coupled with the quarterback, uh, hopefully not too much, but a little bit of that quarterback rotation, I think might actually hurt us um, unless it turns out to be a good thing. Uh, I've seen it be a good thing before. Kind of like the swoops Bouchelle for game one against Notre Dame. That was actually a pretty good change up, but generally it's not (laughs) at least in my experience. Um, But yeah, I, I think defense will do a decent job holding Louisiana down, but they're definitely going to score points. I don't expect us to um, keep them under 20, which I know is their goal for the game every every game this season. Um, but yeah, 34-30 seems right to me, um, winning by a little more than a field goal, um, keeping it pretty close, but uh, nothing, nothing, no crazy finish or anything like that, I, I don't expect. Um, but I do think that Louisiana is definitely going to put up a fight. I don't think they'll be able to win, um, but it'll be a close game. It's kind of what I'm feeling. What about you, Myers? All right. I have Texas winning 41 to 24. Wow. Um, so much different. So I'm expecting a good game. I'm expecting Texas to play. So like, obviously not perfect, not super polished at this point, but uh, I've just, Louisiana is a good team. Yes. Yeah, they're very well coached. They beat Iowa state last year. But they're still a Sun Belt team that, I mean, went to George, went to overtime with Georgia State, beat all oh, these yeah. other terrible teams by four or seven points. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we do that too. We put onto our opponents too. I'm sure they do it as well. And I'm sure they're going to play up to us. So at first, it may be dicey. You know, they may score first, they may get a big stop, turnover. But I just trust our coaching staff and our talent to adjust. We haven't really seen great adjustments over the last 10 years uh, from yeah. our coaching staff, whether they come out with a, you know, Louisiana comes out with a good game plan. I think we'll be able to adjust on the fly with PK and Sark and Jeff Banks. And uh, I'm confident in Hudson Card and Bijan. I mean, those, that is an incredibly dynamic backfield. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think people really realize what we have there yet. I mean, Bijan people know about, but Hudson is just, I think he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks to ever come through UT. And uh, we're finally turning him loose on Saturday and there's no film on him. And uh, he's definitely ready for the moment, I feel like. I mean, he played in huge games before. I mean, he came in as a sophomore in the state championship against Allen 
uh, as a receiver. He's uh, the quarterback went down. I think it was Matthew Baldwin and Hudson had to get thrown in as a sophomore in Jerry world. And he did great. So I don't think he'll be blinded by the lights. I think he'll be ready for this. And uh, I think our offense will be, it may start off slow the first quarter, but I think our defense will set the pace and I'll, I think they'll have a lot of trouble scoring on us and our PK and our, our great D line and secondary. So um, I think Texas wins comfortably pull away in the second half. And uh, we get that hype train, that hype train rolling, that Texas is back hype train. We'll get it, we'll get it going in the media, which I hate by the way, but it'll be alive and well once we win. And, and all the haters and losers that have been saying all, all summer long that Texas is going to start off. zero and two Texas is going to lo- lose to Louisiana. When, if we do out and beat, if we do go out and beat Louisiana Lafayette, I don't want to hear y'all start saying that, oh, it's just Louisiana. It's just a Sunbelt team. They're garbage anyways. Change, let's completely change tones. I've got so many screenshots on tech tags and everything of all these uh, A&M fans, Arkansas fans, OU fans, just, just you know, expecting us to lose. And I, I just can't – I know they're going to – assuming we win, I know their tone's, their tone's going to change very quickly. So that will be fun to watch. Agreed. That's that's a fantastic point. Um, media definitely. <laughs> there's been some interesting takes uh, in the in the general media as of late with Texas's record, and definitely a mixed bag because there are some media members, you know, high profile people that think that Texas is going to be pretty good. But I've heard a fair amount of you know, <laughs> not very good as well. So I, I think just in general, this team is a bit of a question mark. Um, definitely a lot of talented individuals and such just that coupled with the new coaching staff and a lot of the talented you know players being largely unproven um definitely makes for a compelling uh interesting and hard to predict uh team ahead um i guess any final thoughts that you have myers in regards to this game um anything we're missing i think we just about covered everything I'm going to ask you this, just one last thing before we get yeah. up. I'm going to give you the over and under on Bijan Robinson. I'm going to set it at 150 uh, yards. Are you going to all purpose, like receiving all in? All purpose. Rushing. Okay, that changes things. Uh, I, I'm personally, I think, I think gonna, over, barely. Yeah, for uh, sure. I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him one, 160, 165, all purpose. And three touchdowns. Well, if he has three touchdowns, I don't know if my score prediction <laughs> is as accurate. I'll definitely give him two. I, I could definitely see two. Uh, three might be a little too much for me, but wouldn't shock me either. Again, like I know that my score prediction, you know, call for a close game that isn't super high scoring or anything like that, but um, a high scoring affair that would be very favored in UT um, in Texas's, you know way uh that one shocked me either with just a big win from texas because i think they have the capability to do to do that but again it's really just comes down to like i need to see it uh much like the pass rush and so many other things um i'm in show me mode uh excited but in show me mode so very curious to see how saturday runs down you got to start drinking some of the kool-aid man i'm (laughs) yeah I'm ready. I'm ready. I, At least for now. If we lose, I will be crushed and I will never, never drink the Kool-Aid ever again. <laughs> I got to pace myself. I mean, I, you know, I'm a pretty seasoned guy when it comes to this. I've, you know, been watching Texas pretty closely for the past, what, seven, eight years at this point. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of Kool-Aid drinking and more times than not, it's been a, it's been a nasty sugar high and fall <laughs> from that Kool-Aid uh, rather than just constant d- enjoyable sipping per se. But yeah, just trying to, just trying to be realistic, but I'm, but I'm optimistic. I'm not, I'm not a hater. So yeah, but I, regardless, I think we both feel that Texas is going to win and uh, hopefully that's the result for us Texas fans out there watching. Um, you got anything else? Wrap this show up. That's it. See you at the game Saturday. Let's go. Let's go win this game and, and bring let's, let's the roof off DKR Saturday, shall we? Let's do it. Do it. New turf, new field, new end zone, whole lot of new things, new Sark era, a lot of excitement. Uh, so again, please subscribe, like, and comment. Um, 
Please share this with your friends if you feel compelled and uh, help us to get to 2K come next weekend. Um, with that said, horns up and uh, get excited. This game will be